Father Theodore Hesburgh is considered to be one of the most important educational, religious, and civic leaders of the 20th century. Last hour, we told you about the documentary that was released on DVD this week about his life. Well, our Vahid Sadrazade is live with part two of our Hesburgh series with an exclusive you'll only see right here on ABC 57 Saturday kickoff. Vahid. Allison, as college football fans ascend on campus here at the University of Notre Dame, one of the obvious uh, selfie spots and picture spots that you'll find here that they want to take a picture with, of course, is Touchdown Jesus. The Word of Life mural, as it is called, was installed on the facade of the library in 1964. But what many fans do not see is the 13th floor of the building, an office where Father Ted Hesburgh spent many years in retirement overlooking the university he helped build. And for the very first time, we were given an exclusive tour of the still sacred space. Many aspects of the Hesburgh Library are brand new. The foyer, where faculty and students are welcome. Meeting rooms with state-of-the-art glass. But on the 13th floor, tucked away behind rows of books, one side of the building remains untouched. A simple nameplate on the door reads, Reverend Theodore M. Hesburgh, CSC. We are greeted by this, the stunning view and the office rarely seen. Hesburgh settled into this space in 1989 after his retirement and traveling the world with Father Ned Joyce. You'll be able to see a number of mementos and a little bit about his life that uh, is represented here on the 13th floor. Dennis Brown personally worked with Father Hesburgh for 25 years before he passed away in 2015. Brown now gives this tour to first-year students. The office today is pretty much the way it was uh, the last day he worked in it, which was only a couple of weeks before he passed away, uh, again at age 97. Walking into his office is like walking back in time. Hesburg, a cigar aficionado, with one still left on his desk, sitting right next to his trusty old magnifying glass. He had macular degeneration, and uh, so he had a magnifying glass that helped him see uh, a little bit, but uh, later in his life, uh, he really depended on students to come up and read the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post. He was a voracious reader. The smell of oak wrapped around floor to ceiling bookcases, textbooks neatly stacked, many telling of his world travels, a sitting area where no doubt world leaders once sat. He was very devoted to his family. And pictures, dozens of them, of friends, dignitaries, presidents, and popes. Honors and awards hanging on the walls, resting on the shelves, lining the hallways, not just filling one room, but two. Pretty good fishermen uh, with the size of some of these fish that he was able to reel in. And, and you'll find that Father Ted was an avid fisherman with many adventures to Lando Lakes, a property the university owns in Wisconsin. He was also a big fan of flying, a rare civilian on board a Blackbird. The, the president felt like he, uh, he owed some favors to Father Ted for all that Father Ted had done for the country. And uh, so they did set a, a, a world record for uh, speed. And um, it's one of his uh, really favorite memories. His personal driver, Marty Ogren, knows those adventures and this office well. I would go up and see him and pick up his mail and, and talk. And so I still, there's been a couple times since I've retired and where I've walked, unlocked the door and I walk back to say hi and then it done. He's not there, he's not there, you know, so. So yeah, we all miss him. A leader, a friend, and always a father. We'd get on the road and we'd talk 10, 15 minutes. He'd want to know about family and the work and things like that. And then he would ask me as if he needed my permission to say his daily prayers. And he would pray and then he would delve into his work. Of all the honors and accolades and achievements and titles that he held, uh, being a priest was the most important thing to him. Yes, his office also included a chapel. The thing that is most notable about uh, Father Hesper uh, was the depth of his curiosity. Uh, he, he was a constant learner throughout his life and, and, um, and was curious about any and everything. And I think that if all of us were that way and open to um, a wide variety of perspectives and, and thoughts, certainly in, 
in our current climate, uh, that's something we could use a lot more of, and, and he was a great example of that. A present day view that preserves the past and that helps educate our future. What a view, what an office, what a man. Father Theodore Hesburgh memorialized here at the University of Notre Dame right next to Father Ned Joyce as well, who they had many adventures in their retirement. It was such an honor to view his office and go on that tour. Uh, Marty and Dennis both told me that only a few handful of students get to go on that tour each and every year and they say it is an honor to give that tour to them because they say and I think Allison this is what we have taken away from today Father Theodore Hesburgh those who knew him they talk about kindness and only if we can carry that into our lives today I think we'd all be that much better live at the University of Notre Dame Bahid Sadrazadeh, ABC 57 Saturday kickoff. Allison will send it back to you.